before we get started. I need to say a huge thank you to Adobe for sponsoring this video and my 2000 mile voyage to the 99U conference, which I'm about to tell you all about. This is the most personally significant video that I've made in probably a year. So I really hope you guys enjoy it. I really hope it's helpful and I would really appreciate your feedback in the comments. There is so much good coming on the horizon, including this video. <laughs> enjoy. Have you guys ever experienced a rut in your work or life? For those who are new here, let me give you some background. And uh, for those who aren't new, at least there will be cool video clips rolling while I'm retelling my story. I started my YouTube channel May 2016, exactly two years ago. Thanks for tuning in to my very first time-lapse painting. I just quit my job teaching art to kindergartners through sixth graders, and as an extremely nervous, know nothing with a dream, I decided to go full-time painting. Please keep filming, please keep filming. You may know me from Instagram. Hopefully. Now I wasn't in a place where my art income was sustainable at all to be doing this, but I had worked hard and saved hard, and with a little financial cushion, I was ready to chase down my dreams. Now cue all my random simultaneous efforts to make it work. I liked making art, but I had no business sense, and the prospect of making a living as an artist seemed like an impossible task. Do you relate? So I decided to try everything I could think of and see what worked. I applied to group shows, competitions, plein air painting events, outdoor art shows, I put my work up in a local restaurant, in a new art center, I went to art openings and tried to join the local artist community, I made a website to sell paintings, pushed my work out on social platforms, and finally, you guys, I made a YouTube channel. I am making this video because I want to start making videos about art. I just want to like, I don't know, I don't know what I want. I just want to be energetic, I want to reach out more, I want to be more social. I want to be a professional artist so, so bad, um, and I want to not be afraid of doing it. Initially I imagined, cool, I can kill a few birds with one stone, make the work I want, have a camera rolling, put out time-lapse painting videos, reach a larger audience through my additional social media platform, drive traffic to my website, and voila, hopefully I sell some paintings. In reality, I had no idea how important YouTube would become to my work. Pretty immediately I got really inspired to expand my reach. I wanted to make videos worth people's attention, and I love doing it. I spent a year focused on expanding my channel. I made a lot less art and a lot better videos. Then things started changing in my personal life. After a big belief system shift, I lost direction. In addition to not knowing most things about my life anymore, I didn't know what kind of art I wanted to make. Enter stage right, Robin's experimental phase. Some of you may have noticed that lately, I don't feel like painting waves. Honestly, I started my whole channel with the intention of just using it to promote my wave paintings. So what happened? With the backing of an awesome online support system, I decided to start exploring new work. I gave myself freedom and got a big kick out of ditching the perfectionism and allowing yourself the ability to change and grow. This period is one that hit a lot of chords among the artists that follow my channel. I loved the peek I got into the shared thought processes and emotions we experience as artists. While I was learning and growing a lot during this time, I was also always fighting off a rut. Sometimes your emotional energy expenditure takes away from your creative energy availability. I had a few months with much fewer videos and paintings going up, and a lot less humor integrating into my content. Do you guys ever just not enjoy making art? As I was working to get back on schedule with uploads and art making though, 
an amazing opportunity reached my inbox. Adobe was hosting a conference in New York City. I was told the 99U conference was partnering with creatives to bring to life their theme for the year, Challenge Everything. It was a place for people in all spectrums of the creative workforce to come together and get inspired, and I was invited to be one of them. Dear God, how did I get so lucky? So a few weeks later, struck with total imposter syndrome after researching the other mind-blowing creatives I would be meeting, I boarded a plane and made my way to the Big Apple. I want to emphasize a big component of this trip for me. It was completely out of my comfort zone. I had never even been to a conference before, let alone one I'd been invited to by a seriously reputable creative company that I admire a lot and whose products I've used regularly for years. How about that shout out? Beyond that, I'm just kind of a pansy. The idea of going to a big city completely on my own, knowing no one at the event, feeling less professional and less cool than pretty much everyone, having the opportunity to meet people I never imagined I would, whoa. Horrifyingly scary and also crazy cool. I knew that once I got past the opening party and just bridged the gap of my own social fears, proved myself I wasn't completely socially incompetent, that the rest of the conference would be amazing. And it really was just that. So here we are. Now enter stage left. Hello! The thing that you've all been waiting for, the actual conference. The advice and experiences I traveled 2,000 miles to get to have takeaways that I honestly believe will impact the rest of my life. Not exaggerating. Thursday, May 10th, day one of the conference. Good morning. I am in Harlem. I stayed with my nephew last night. Today is the first day of the 99U conference. I'm so excited. Last night was the opening party and I had an amazing time. This is the, my look. <laughs> I made my way to my first meetup with the four creative partners Adobe invited to the conference. I'm going to introduce them all because I respect the crap out of them. There was Sam Yashiro, who runs awesome.com, a creative DIY lifestyle blog. Lauren Hom, a designer and letterer who runs the studio Hom Sweet Hom. Todd Carpenter, an illustrator co-owning the Carpenter Collective Studio with his wife Jessica. And Andy J. Miller, aka Andy J. Pizza, an illustrator who runs the Creative Pep Talk podcast. Is this a movie? <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh, it's a movie. Wait, you're filming this? <laughs> you your phone? Aww. Good content for the blog. These guys have all worked with companies the likes of Nickelodeon, Converse, Coca-Cola, MTV, Target, Tumblr, YouTube, Google, Adobe. Do you get why I feel the imposter syndrome now? Want to know what really struck me during my time with these people though? For as incredible as their work is, as professional as they are, they're just other us's. Does that make sense? For how much they've accomplished and the size of their impact, they all have unique and winding stories of how they developed their platforms into the amazing, seemingly seamless projects that they are today. We sat around at lunch one day discussing ideas, problem solving, expressing our own anxieties. Hearing from them, I realized how much of that fake it till you make it feeling applies to everyone who's ever done something incredible with their work. All self-starters, they're each at different levels of expansion, balancing how many projects they take on. Maybe I'm projecting, but I do think it's important to talk about. If you're sitting at home wondering about your own creative path, I think it's important to realize what I did sitting with these totally inspiring people. I came into this conference thinking I would be a young, know-nothing of the group, and while that was partly true, Sam is a year younger than me and Lauren's a year older. Being surrounded by peers with a very high work ethic, great design sense, strong passion for their careers, figuring out for themselves similar things to what I am, it just reminds you how much you can accomplish, what your abilities are, how you can align your focus of your limited time and valuable attention to worthy things. It helped me recognize ways in which I should be working smarter, where to be directing my time to give it to the things that will help me accomplish my goals. It also gained me new goals just through admiring what they've been able to accomplish. Huge takeaway here, there is so much to be learned from diversifying your experiences and the people you interact with. I have a lot more to say about that later on. For now though, remember how I said the 99U theme was challenge everything? Well, within that theme umbrella exists a smaller umbrella, an umbrella within an umbrella, if you will, a nesting doll of umbrellas. Sam, Lauren, Andy, Tad, and I were all challenged to go into the conference thinking about different nesting doll topics. Mine was, challenge format. Considering all the changes I've been leaning into over the last year, revising and reformatting my video approaches, experimenting with my artistic identity, and trying new styles, and now all the changes I'm hoping to implement moving forward, stay tuned for that. Challenging format seems like the perfect lens through which we can look at everything I'm about to share from this conference. So as we go through it, I'll extend this challenge to you. Consider how you can implement some of these ideas to challenge your own format. 
As I talk about this, I'll be sharing time-lapse footage from a piece I made inspired by the Adobe conference. That said, let's dive in. To keep this organized and make sure you hear the most important things I learned, I'm going to run through the speakers that stood out to me and highlight my favorite quotes. Afterwards, I'll flesh out some of the more impactful ideas I pulled and add my personal thoughts for you to chew on. First was Tina Roth Eisenberg. My biggest lessons from her were making sure that in life and work you show up and give a damn, and when making decisions that you pay attention to your body and look for a full body yes. Next was Todd Yellen, who said, getting the best ideas allows for finding quiet voices. He advocates the importance of listening to people, especially the voices that won't fight for attention, and also emphasizes the importance of challenging ideas and risk-taking, advising to lean so far forward that sometimes you fall on your face. Then third, Tina Uglo, speaking to a room full of designers and other creatives said, care about a lot of things that aren't design. Be a curious person. And beyond that, she advocates, drink a lot of coffee, talk to people, take risks, and just do it. You do not know what is going to happen to you. After these speakers, Sarah Kalick speaking to a mindfulness training said, we tend to lean into familiar experiences and people, and the cost of that is growth and creativity. Fifth was Tiffany Dufu, who said, if you want something you've never had before, you're going to have to do something you've never done before, and advocated that if you are going to drop balls, make sure you drop these three related to unrealistic expectations. One, who was I supposed to be? Two, what was I supposed to do? And three, a fear of asking for help. Adam J. Kurtz was next. And in true Adam J. K. style, advised creatives afraid to take a risk. No one's waiting for you to F up. You think people are paying attention. They're probably not. Seventh is Scott Belsky. To list a few quotes. Endure the lows and make each low a little less low. The future is crafted by people who do things they don't have to do. Constraints keep us uncomfortable. Discomfort breeds creativity. And stay in the early innings. Still taking risks. Willing to make mistakes. Always generating new ideas. This state is not temporal, but a mentality you should adopt. Adopt. Eighth on my list is Mona Chalabi, a data editor who is a huge example of using art to challenge format through presenting data in the most surprising, hysterical, easily digestible format I've ever seen. She advised surprise people, slow people down, get them to look longer. And lastly on my list was Vince Kadlubek, the CEO of Meow Wolf, who said, humans desperately want to walk through their household appliances. He and his team create installation art in different venues, one of which, the House of Eternal Return, takes you into an ordinary looking home within which are two extraordinary objects, a fridge and a washing machine. Upon seeing them, you realize they are lit up portals through which you can climb to find beyond them a totally new, interactive, magical space. Vince describes how something that looks predictable that then becomes fiction produces the magical and important question. If my fridge is not as it's been, then could that be true of the world and of me? All of these ideas afloat, how do we use them to grow? How do you challenge format? How do you innovate? If you want something you've never had before, you're going to have to do something you've never done before. But how do we do this? These are my five pieces of advice to you. One, be willing to shed your identity. When you first get started in any endeavor, you are free of expectations and boxes. You've not built an identity that you are actively working to protect. Because of this, you are willing to take risks, self-discover, listen more actively to new and outside ideas, and make mistakes. You cannot innovate if you are unwilling to shed your existing identity and let in the new. Two, care about a lot of things that aren't designed. Make sure you are fueling your creative ideas by feeding your brain and supplementing your idea vault with new experiences. If all you experience exists within a small bubble and your only hobby or interest is making things, how can you generate ideas on what to make? How do you avoid only recycling the same ideas? Having additional hobbies, meeting people, being curious and active informs both your work and the depth of the messages you're able to share. Three, invite diverse experiences. How much of the limited diversity of our interactions is because we avoid situations? We tend to lean into familiar experiences and people at the cost of growth and creativity. So whether you're limiting your interactions with new people or places or things, it's important to be aware of the value in expanding your interactions and listening and watching with invested interest. Four, live as if every moment matters. Living mindfully, not mindlessly, and very intentionally. Think about what you fill your time with and give your attention to. Pick the thoughts you give your mental and emotional energy to wisely. Time is limited. Are you making your world better? Five, fail. 
Lean so far forward that sometimes you fall on your face. Beyond the beautiful talks I heard, so much of what I learned and grew from were the people attending the conference that I met. So many people traveled much more than 2,000 miles for this experience. Just the act of getting to know them and stepping outside my usual sphere of influence opened a door of understanding for me. I really do believe that leaning into familiar experiences carries a certain cost of growth and creativity. Something as simple as exiting your comfort zone with a mission to grow increases your comfort with and excitement for new experiences. It helps you to realize how much the value in them outweighs the benefits of never making yourself uncomfortable. So what's stopping you? Remember, if you want something you've never had before, you're going to have to do something you've never done before. Thank you all so much for being here and watching this video, whether you've been here along the entire journey or you are just joining us. I really do feel like I'm at the start of something new and if you're interested in following along with that journey at all make sure you are subscribed and you can follow me along on social media or on my patreon i will have everything linked down below but thank you for your attention thanks for tuning in bye 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 goodbye goodbye bye